How does having the answer disempower you and others? Well, think about that. You know, when we went through school, a lot of times we succeeded if we had the right answer. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. But what happens is we get out of school and having the right answer often limits us. In this video, I'm going to share three reasons why if you have the answer, it disempowers you and others. And then I'm going to give you a warning at the end. So stay tuned to the end. I'm Karen Valencic, and I am the author and founder of Spiral Impact, The Power to Get It Done with Grace. And I've been working with leaders and teams for three decades, and I certainly have learned a lot. And this is a big one. So the first point I want to make, instead of having the answer, ask open-ended questions because when you ask open-ended questions people's minds start thinking in fact i modeled that in this video i asked you a question and i wonder if you started thinking what the answer was the question was is how does having the answer disempower you so i hope you you got your your gears and your brain thinking brings together more perspectives. I'm an engineer by background. I am a really good problem solver. And what I've learned over my life is that oftentimes I have an answer. Then when I ask other people for their input, I get such rich results. Asking others, again, open-ended questions brings a lot of creativity to the table. So that is one way that if you have the answer, it disempowers you and it disempowers those around you. The second point is, is when you ask those open-ended questions, people feel like they're contributing and that they are appreciated and belonging. Because if they're never asked what they think or how they might do this, they are just there. It's an important part of building a cohesive team is to ask those questions. The third aspect about not having the right answer is that when you start asking the questions and engaging people, you flush out any misunderstanding because now you're having dialogue and communication. can't tell you how many times that I have seen people really not understanding what's going on on their team because it hasn't been thoroughly flushed out. So those are the three things. Now, I told you I was going to give you a warning, and actually I'm going to give you two warnings. When you ask those open-ended questions, be very careful with the question, why? Why can create a defense. So if you're asking somebody, why did they do that, or why do they think that, it can create a defense. So questions like how, when, where, tell me about your thought process on this, those are all really great. The other warning I have is if you are going to ask questions, be sure to listen, carefully consider, and acknowledge those people. Because if you don't, if you ask for input and you ignore it, then you are probably worse off than before you began. Be sure to acknowledge and appreciate. And one of the things I've learned over these three decades is that People don't necessarily have to have their way, but they want to know that their ideas are considered and that they are heard. So I would love to hear your experience and anything else that you would like to add to this conversation in the comments. Until next time, if you are interested in power with grace, hey, subscribe or follow me wherever you're seeing this. And until next time, thank you so very much. Bye-bye.